Good evening, racing fans. Welcome back to the channel, brought to you in association with betting.co.uk. I'm your host, Ginger Joe, and I'm back with a bit of a preview for you of New Year's Day's racing at Cheltenham, one of my favourite meetings throughout the entire year outside of the Cheltenham Festival. And I think there's about 35,000 expected there tomorrow. But first things first, Happy New Year to each and every one of you tuning in. And that's whether you're a regular of my channel or whether you're new tuning in. If you are new tuning in, please do hit that subscribe button. It helps me out a great deal and pushes my content out there to a wider audience. But for being a subscriber as well, I do give away three £10 bets and a rate or shares on a monthly basis just for being subscribed and staying tuned to my channel as a bit of a thank you and something to give back to you for tuning in as long with some winners. Now, we managed to finish off the year with a nice winner today, Bowens Park at 6-1. to one. So we beat the bookies on the final day of the year and I'm hoping to obviously do the same uh, in tomorrow's racing um, as well. And we'll be there at Cheltenham as well. So if any of you are there and you do see me, feel free to pop over and say hello and even drop me a winner for the day because I may well need one at the time. Um, but coming up as well this year, I'm going to be dropping some golf selections as well. So any of you golfers out there or anyone that likes to punt on the golf, I've got some touring experience as a professional myself. And I've trialed this in my um, group chat, uh, which is completely free. And if you'd like to join, actually, there is a link in the description below. Uh, but I tried the golf uh, selections over the last six months and there was quite a lot of significant uh, profit come the finishing time. So I thought I'm going to drop some videos coming as well. Uh, to you real soon for the 2023 season uh, and I'm going to bring those selections for you moving forward. As well as this, uh, in the description below, courtesy of betting.co.uk, I've got some sign-up offers for you to take advantage of because, of course, we all love free bets. But that's that out of the way. I'm going to move on now straight to the preview for tomorrow's racing. We will start with the opener, which is the 12-10. We've got a two-and-a-half-mile maiden hurdle here. Now, I don't necessarily have a strong selection in the race, but I do have quite a strong viewpoint on how I think this race is going to pan out uh, come the finishing line. Firestep has been a bit of a talking horse for Nicky Henderson. He is actually on the drift out to 11-2, to two, but he won two bumpers nicely enough, quite cozily, even though they were quite short margins. But he does come back off a 650-day absence, and I wouldn't want to be fancy him coming back first time out. I think he's actually going to come out and be a little bit keen first time out at Cheltenham, and I think he's one that I'd want to see him run before getting involved, even if he is drifting out to sort of a backable price now. I just think he's one of these horses that his profile actually outweighs um, his chances in this race and I would not be getting involved with fire step first of all the three that I think are going to take the race by the scruff of the neck and come up the hill together will be three that have got previous hurdles uh, form and the uh, favorite we've all been caught for Nigel Twist and Davis he should actually be really hard to beat at 11 to 8 um, but as I said there's a few in this race that do have chances and I like the fact that this one comes in here with the hurdles experience he's only got eight lengths to find with Hermes Elen who obviously bolted up um, earlier on today but this one travels really really nice and ought to go close and he's definitely got a few gears even though he's slightly dropping back in trip but the piece of form that I do really like um, comes in November when Gentle Slope's got the better of school days over by four lengths. And I think both of these horses are actually really going to appreciate this step up and trip. And this will actually bring out a little bit more improvement in the pair. Now, I went down to the Milton Harris uh, stable a few months ago, and I have seen Gentle Slopes. He's massive. He's actually built like a gold cup horse. And we're probably going to see the best of him when he does jump a fence. But it's evident that he's got a touch of class based on that run in November, but he's definitely got a few issues in the jumping department. I'd like him to clean up on that before getting re-involved in him again after what he showed first time out. But again, he is inclined to improve on that. But the one I think is worth taking a chance on here is school days over for Fergal O'Brien and Paddy Brennan. He was actually second behind Gentle Slopes that day by four lengths, but made up some nice progress towards the end of this race. And it looks like he's going to really appreciate the step up in trip. He did also jump quite nicely as well. So I haven't got any concerns with him in that department. He did actually open up at 10 to 1. He is all the way now into 9 to 2. But I think school days over is the one I'll just about side with. But I think all three of these are going to come up the hill pretty close. And it will be a battle between these come the finish line. But as a bet, I think I'd take a chance on school days over. Just to mention as well, these selections do go up earlier in my free Discord group chat. Again, there's a link in the description below. And I did put him up when he was 10 to 1, but he is now into 9 to 2. Again, it's just uh, an option if you'd like to come over and join us there as well. Okay, so then we move on to the 12.45. We've got a three mile, two furlong handicap chase here. And I'm just going to side with one that looks laid out for this race. And I think that's Papa Poutine at six to one. 
Um, started off at 15-2, has actually received a bit of support already for the local boys, Twisters, and they tend to do really, really well at this meeting as well. So after what I think is going to be a slight disappointment with we've all been caught getting beat in the opener, I do think Papa Poutine is going to have a really good opportunity to get them back on the leaders board um, in the next race. He jumps really well and he stays further than this as well. He actually got beaten over three mile, four furlongs at Haydock, but he only just got beaten on the nod. So he definitely stays really, really well. And his asset that I think is best is his jump and he travels and jumps really, really nicely. So he just ought to go close in this race. I think I'm just going to side with the reliability and I think he's going to go really, really close at a price. The danger in the race may be rapper for Henry Daly. I think he travels quite well and another one that just stays particularly well. So probably not going to be too far away, but the selection will be Popper Poutine at what is now six to one. In the 120, we've got the two and a half mile Dipper Chase, the grade two. And this is one where Momorel and Thunder Rock head the betting, but they're too short to tempt me in. And to be honest, I think they're both a little bit unreliable, even though they both won last time out. And Thunder Rock looks like he's seriously improving nicely. But I'm just going to go and have a go at two at bigger prices here. The first being Harper's Brook at 10 to 1. He just seems to be getting better, not by run, but by the mile. He's starting to travel better, better throughout his races. And he literally has jumped better as the races have gone on bit by bit. Um, he did idle to win at Banger on heavy ground, but he obviously stays well. And that was actually a really impressive run, considering that he hasn't actually had too much experience yet. And he's only going in one direction. So at 10 to 1, I think I'll just sort of take a slight chance on him in this race as well. But I will also take a look at Mortlock as well, because he actually ran really nicely in the Cato Start Novices Chase for quite a long way. Now he's 50 to 1 for this race, and you are only going to get the two places, but he drops back to two mile four, which is probably going to be more suited. And he actually traveled really well up with the best of those over two mile four last time out until getting beaten for the stamina late on. So dropping back to two mile four, I'm just going to take my chances in a race that actually could fall apart. And I think more like at 50 to 1 could just be worth a small stake punt. Now, in the 155, we've got the New Year's Day Handicap Chase, and I like two in this race. Brave Shaska carries top way here, but jumps so well at Aintree, carrying 12 stone. I just can't really get that effort out of my head. Even if he runs to that form, and he has gone up again a couple of pounds, even though he's top weight again, he really shouldn't be too far away. But I just wouldn't be surprised if he could back it up. He's won four out of five of his starts now over chases, and he is only eight. So it is actually still possible that there's still more to come in the tank. And eight to one, I will have a little piece of Brave Shashka. But I am also going to take a look at Shake Him Up Harry for the Ben Paulin team. Now, he's told us that he's always thought a lot of Shake Him Up Harry. And although he's been a little bit fragile, he's been very patient with him. And he won very nicely last time out at Exeter. And definitely one that is starting to become on the up. Another one like Brave Shashka jumps really well and travels well. So for the team that are actually flying at the moment, it could be a good day for them tomorrow. And I'm going to side um, with Shake Him Up Harry as well at, uh, duh, 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 duh. he is seven to one. Then we've got the Rail Kill at 2.30. And again, this is one, uh, take your pick really, the first three. Got, I like to move at Nappers Hill and Marie's Rock. But I'm just about going to side with the Greatwood winner. I like to move it here. He won that in emphatic fashion and left a little bit out there for some improvement as well, even though he was winner so decisively. The one that I probably just not really fancy too much here has been Marie's Rock. I think she may actually need the run against the two that are going to be completely race fit so i think the two that are going to come up the hill best will be nappers hill and i like to move it but i'm hoping that i like to move it. it's still on the upgrade and i'd love to see him go and win this up uh, win this race after winning the great wood as well then in the 305 i actually narrowed it down to two again i like call me lord for nicky henderson even though he's a 10 year old now he seems to be in the best form of his life he's really taken a step forward in his last couple of runs and just looks like he's enjoying his races again so i think where the form is concerned, he's one definitely worth keeping on side whilst he's in a piece of form. We know he's been dropping down the handicap mark for some time now. And with a return to form, he has to go there with a really, really good chance, regardless of being a little bit hit and miss. The other one I like in the race has to be a Buffalo Soldier. But if the ground became any softer, I'm not too sure that's going to really help his chances for Warren Grey Checks, but he stays particularly well. So the Cheltenham Hill may counteract that a little bit, and they will be my two selections in the 305. Just to recap on those two before I give you my nap selection, in the 12.10, I like School Days over at 9 to 2. In the 12.45, I like Papa Poutine at 6 to 1. In the 1.20, I like Harper's Brook at 10 to 1 and Mortlack at 50s. 
In the 155, I like Shake Him Up Harry at 7 to 1 and Bray Shashka at 8. In the Rail Kill, the 230, I like, I like to move at 3 to 1 with Nappers Hill being a danger. And then in the 305, I like Call Me Lord at 11 to 2 and a Buffalo Soldier at 4 to 1. But over at Fairy House, I do have a selection in the two o'clock. It's called Gig Harbour. A horse has actually got some really nice form behind the likes of Nuzret. He's actually been quite highly tried and steps into a handicap company for the first time of bottom weight of 18 runners. He carries a featherweight and then has a further seven pound claimer on top of his back. Now, we actually travelled quite well throughout the races that he had uh, leading up to this handicap company without actually showing a threat to the main dangers. However, they have been highly tried and look like they are going to be going towards a few races towards the Cheltenham Festival. So for this one to be dropping into Handicap Company off such a featherweight at 10 to 1 has to be worth a shout for the Noel Media who have done this before with a couple of horses this year. And I think this may just be another one that's a little bit of a plot. So double figures, 10 to 1, Gig Harbour in the 2 o'clock at Fairy House is my nap selection for tomorrow despite all the racing at Cheltenham. Now, as I mentioned, I've got some free bets for you in the section below. I've got some golf bets coming for you real soon and some free bets coming to subscribers. So thank you all again for tuning in. I do wish you all the best of the luck for the entire 2023. But first things first, let's get some winners on the board at Cheltenham tomorrow. Thank you all for tuning in. I'll see you all again real soon. Goodbye for now.